Hello everyone, last time I left you sitting on the runway staring at the controls like a millennial CNN anchor at the mere mention of the word boobs. This time I'm going to help you get to where you're going. First of all, let's do a quick recap with a couple of small corrections on the last video. After turning on the master switches, you should turn on the beacon and the fuel pump. Even though during normal operation fuel is fed by gravity, for the startup the fuel pump needs to be on. A big thanks to the viewers who pointed that out. Your comments are the greatest resource of this channel and very much appreciated. As soon as the engine is running normally, you can of course turn off the fuel pumps. Now let's take a closer look at the G530 and go through some of its features. The G530 is of course based on the real world Garmin 530 satnav system. If you prefer, you may double click on the screen and bring it up as a fully operational 2D panel. For immersive purposes, I prefer to operate it as is. Starting off, you need to be able to decipher the information displayed on screen. In the default plan view, this of course is your heading indicator with your aircraft centered at the bottom. These are your primary and secondary communication frequencies. These are your primary and standby navigation radio frequencies. Below that, we have the current VOR and the radial it may be intercepted on. At the bottom, we have the distance to that VOR. This is the current map scale in nautical miles. This is the next selected waypoint on your journey. Now, like an overenthusiastic suicide bomber at an ISIS training camp, let's see what all those buttons do. This one allows you to select between your main and standby navigation frequencies. This is your squelch key. It does fuck all in X-Plane. Your VOR flip-flop allows you to switch between active and standby VOR frequencies. You can see the heading indicator on the left react as I change to an active frequency. The outer knob giggity at the bottom changes the selected frequency in kilohertz. The inner knob changes the selected frequency in megahertz. The center push allows you to change between the standby com and standby nav frequencies. The CDI button toggles between VOR and GPS as your active navigation system. OBS allows you to select a radial bearing to or from the active waypoint. In addition to being an ingredient overused by your local takeaway, MSG displays system messages. FPL brings up your flight plan page. VNAV allows you to add a third dimension altitude to your flight plan. PROC brings up your procedures page. This is your map range key, up increases, down decreases. Your direct to key allows you to select a direct route to a chosen waypoint. The menu key is context sensitive and provides different functions depending on your selection. The clear key erases an entry or cancels a command. The enter key is the enter key, it's self-explanatory. The outer rotary allows selection between modes and the inner rotary allows selection between pages within those modes. The right rotaries are basically multifunction controls designed to allow you interact with the various features. In the next episode I'll delve further into the 530 and teach you how to create a flight plan. There's a lot of information to impart, so I want to keep these episodes as concise as possible in the vain hope that you'll retain at least some of it. By the way, I've created my own virtual airline based on the current popular budget model. I've started off small with a Cessna and an underpaid, overworked pilot. Pretty soon, I hope to add some thoroughly fucked off passengers to the mix. I thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to dislike or tell me to go fuck myself below.